Hello everyone. Welcome to the episode 47 of Soul Lead Saturday. The guest we have today, Christina Stathopoulos. She is originally from the US but has been based in Madrid, Spain since 2012. She is a dedicated to the world of data, working as an analytical consultant at Google and an adjunct professor of analytics at IE Business School. Alongside her corporate and academic work, She is a regular conference attendee and speaker supporting women in STEM and emerging technologies. I am very excited to talk about talk to her and listen more from her and definitely I am sure that you are going to enjoy this conversation as well. So let's just welcome her. Hi Christina, very happy to have you on the show and really appreciate your all your time and consideration. Of course, thank you so much for for inviting me on for for Soul Lead Saturday. Thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine. So to start with, uh, the first question that I would like to ask is, you know, uh, when I came across your profile, uh, how did you find your interest in data analytics and the big data field? Yeah, I've I've actually always had a love for numbers and and mathematics. It started from a very young age. I started taking like advanced statistics and calculus classes in high school. Mm-hmm. and i knew that i wanted to stick with it for my career but i didn't know exactly how i could make a career out of it mm-hmm. um so i ended up studying an interdisciplinary field with a focus in statistics mm-hmm. um i graduated from from nc state north carolina state university mm-hmm. and then later on i did my masters in business analytics and big data at ie business school mm-hmm. um so my my educational background it it really fit the part and from there i went on and i jumped into professional analytics roles so it all came it all came together for me yeah so that's great actually uh, and uh, you worked as a facilitator and instructor as well and now you are currently as a consultant in the data analytics field so these are like a completely different dynamics so what do you enjoy the most and why Uh well I I still do facilitate and um and instruct but as a part-time job on the side mm-hmm. my core job is an analytical consultant at Google um but my part-time like you mentioned before is that I'm adjunct faculty at IE Business School mm-hmm. I'm also a guest lecturer at ISD they're both higher education um universities in Madrid Spain so what do I enjoy the most um uh, personally I love teaching I love watching like the progression of my students Mm-hmm. as they acquire new knowledge and and effectively change their behavior and and give them new ideas and it's particularly enjoyable for me because i'm teaching about something that i'm passionate about and i believe that shows through when when i'm giving these classes um so so very passionate about that but the majority of my time is of course my full time job working as an analytical consultant which i i enjoy as well um and i think it gives me an advantage to it's not that i enjoy one or the other more but i think it gives me an advantage to work in both the private corporate world mm-hmm. and academia because i can bring that corporate experience and that corporate no- corporate knowledge mm-hmm. into the classroom mm-hmm. um and use it in my classes it, it it's really what my students want because most of my students are mba level mm-hmm. and they really appreciate if i can bring that corporate experience into the classroom and give them some real world applications and and tell them what's going on in the world so i think um both sides really really benefit each other oh that's great actually and as you mentioned uh, that you know you are actually able to give them the real practical scenarios which is more of a learning actually rather than just giving them the academics like you know whatever is there in the syllabus or something like that exactly so, yeah. yeah so thank you so much for sharing one more thing i came across which is i found it very uh, unique actually about you so would you like to talk more about hashtag i am remarkable and share more insights with the audience yeah um so for those that are not familiar with i am remarkable um it started out years ago as a 20% project within google um it started in the london offices mm-hmm. and it eventually grew into this worldwide initiative that has um as of now it's directly impacted more than 140,000 participants in over 130 countries so it's it's grown a lot um and the the goal of the initiative it tries to highlight the many struggles that uh women and underrepresented groups face within the workplace and it's a workshop it's like a one and a half two hour workshop that helps empower any underrepresented group 
um, by encouraging you to openly talk about your accomplishments in the workplace. Um, and it's both an internal initiative at Google, but also external now. So you can, you or anybody can learn about it. You can go to iamremarkable.withgoogle.com. Um, mm -hmm. You can read about it there. And I highly um, recommend any of our listeners to participate, um, to be a part of a workshop. You can actually, there's a place on the website where you can fill it in, in case you want a workshop for your company. And then you can, you can see what this is all about. But um, I, I highly recommend it as well. Mm -hmm. It's not just for women. It's for any underrepresented groups. So that means if at some time you felt like an outsider, whether it because it's because of your culture, your background, your beliefs, mm -hmm. um, everybody has felt like an outsider at some point in their lives. So it's I think it's really beneficial for, for everyone. Wow, that's great, actually. So it is more over like uh, diversity coming together and, you know, standing for something good. So exactly. thank you so much for sharing and I'm definitely going to join it and I will encourage the audience as well to uh, join that group. Moving towards our next question is about, you know, you like to work in an international environment because you already mentioned a lot more about the diversity as well and kind of initiatives you are part of. What do you see as an advantage or the disadvantages associated with it? Like, you know, any specific challenges and how to handle those challenges? I, I believe I personally thrive when working in an international environment, but it definitely comes with its challenges that you have to take into account. Um, so in my case, I'm an American working in Spain, mm -hmm. and in most corporate settings, I am the only non-Spanish or, or non-Latin in the room. So mm -hmm. I feel a bit like an outsider, mm -hmm. um, but I think it can be an advantage um, coming from a very different culture because it means that I come with uh, different views, different opinions on things. Mm -hmm. So that can bring diversity and creativity and innovation. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, um, it can work against me as well because sometimes it's hard for me to get my voice heard because I'm like the only one, that outsider. Um, but Besides that, I think the toughest thing of all is is adapting to deep cultural working styles. So, um, for example, in Spain, just to give some some little examples, but in Spain they do a lot of small talk um, before getting to the point. Whereas for me, I'm very much let's let's get to the point and do what we came here to do. Uh -huh. um, or as well, it's it's totally acceptable to arrive late. Uh -huh. They have a very different concept of punctuality. Whereas I'm, my style is very much uh, come early to everything. So it's very different. Um, and then, of, of course, you have the typical misunderstandings of phrases and, and jokes. So whatever it is, um, I try to stay positive, um, even if it's something that bothers me. And I do my best to adapt without losing my own style of working. So I think that's important. When you're working in a different culture, try to find that middle ground. Um, between your own working style and the local cultural working style. It's a bit of a, a balancing game between the both. Yeah, that's really very wise actually. Yeah. Anybody to know that, you know, how to work in the diverse culture or uh, whenever it comes to the relocation or the traveling, uh, you have to understand actually. So thank you for sharing. And our next question is about, you know, uh, talking about more about your area of expertise. So do you think that too much attention is being paid to big data tools and not enough attention to the big data project management? Can we discuss more it in detail? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good point. Uh, and it's true. We focus a lot on, on the technical side of things and the latest technologies, but we don't often touch on the project management side of things, which is just as important. Um, and I think it's very important that you see a, a big data project from start to finish. Someone needs to be there to manage it all. Um, just like any other project management, you need to have someone who is responsible for, you know, delivering quality results within the limitations. So whatever those limitations may be, like um, time, budget, technical, uh, scope, um, and, and big data projects can have a lot going on a lot of little pieces in the background that management or um, the final users, they don't realize that all of this is going on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the challenges depend on the exact type of project that you're doing. So whether it's more software development, um, hardware, maybe a migration to the cloud or analytics, mm -hmm. um, and, and common issues that you face are things like data quality, um, settling on the right platform or tool, because there's okay. so many options out there. And even things like regulation and data privacy, which are becoming more and more complicated nowadays. 
Um, and in order to properly manage these projects, a, a PM needs to have a solid understanding of the technical side. Mm -hmm. And in some instance, instances, a very deep um, knowledge of this. So as well as having those skills of product, project management in general. So knowing how to put the pieces together, um, finding the right resources, connecting the right team members, and managing stakeholder expectations. So it, it requires a very well-rounded professional. Okay. So uh, how, how do you see your role in it, actually? Being a consultant, how do you see your role of fitting into this uh, big data project? So yeah, I, so I personally, I manage projects, not teams. <laughs> Um, and I do a lot of, of data projects. That's my that's my job. Um, and the the key um, the key skills for this mm -hmm. it's not just understanding the technical side, which I do, and that can be tough as well. You've got to manage the technical side of things, and then the other side is all of the collaboration and communication that's involved. Because usually a project is not just one or two people doing it. You're going to have a lot of different people involved along the along the way. And you're also going to have a lot of stakeholders that you have got to set their expectations and make sure they're, they're happy um, along the way. Yeah. One more question I would like to ask out of curiosity is that, you know, when you, we are talking about the stakeholders, how do you uh, see communicating the technical aspect to them? Like, uh, how do you explain them? Like this is a, a, a golden question. Um, it is really tough. Depends. Depends who the stakeholders are, because sometimes your stakeholder might be somebody who does have a technical background. Mm -hmm. So say it's somebody who's used to managing analytics teams mm -hmm. or like a, a CTO or a CDO, they should come with the right knowledge. But in many cases, you're going to also have um, more, you know, business focused managers. And I think that's what you're asking about. Like, how do we communicate with them? Um, and it's, it's really tough. Um, this is where I think skills of like, data storytelling and, and learning how to communicate this is a, a very valuable skill and it's being able to translate this technical knowledge into like business business words or business knowledge um, and it's actually something that i've had a lot of experience with because i i teach so again talking about that balance mm -hmm. between my corporate and my um educational work Mm -hmm. it's t it's it's actually helped in education it's helped me in the business world because i've had to build these classes for mba students and mm -hmm. it's the same kind of concept i have to learn how to um, translate technical knowledge mm -hmm. but to the business side so it takes some work and you've got to think about it but it's it's kind of like a translation process finding a way to explain these technical things but in words that anyone can understand Wow, that's great actually, and thank you so much for sharing. Uh, it wasn't a part of the list, but it was like you know very uh, very much interesting to see how people are handling it because it is kind of a learning as well along the experience that you get. Uh, you start learning from you know each stakeholder as well. The way uh, every every stakeholder is different, as you mentioned. So thank you so much for sharing. And uh, right. next question is about one more initiative that you have on the LinkedIn is that you know. Uh, hashtag book a week challenge can you tell us more about your that challenge and any books that you would like to recommend in the analytics space yeah i i host the book a week challenge on linkedin and i started it a couple years ago um mm -hmm. to try to encourage others to put down their phones and get rid of bad habits mm -hmm. and and read books uh, more often um, and I encourage others to read a book a week, but as well, it's, it's just as good if you can read a book a month. Mm -hmm. The key is to start reading more and to read regularly. And I share my weekly recommendations on LinkedIn and I encourage others as well to do the same. I have quite a few others participating and we all share with that hashtag. And it's a way that we can share as a community what everybody's reading and try to get ideas from one another. We, we give our review as well of each book. That's true, actually. And uh, definitely, I would encourage the audience as well to participate in it. At least start following that uh, post, those posts. And uh, once you find something interesting, definitely you will find something interesting when you start following something over the period. And once you find your interest in it, that definitely start doing that by yourself. So thank you so much. And moving towards our next question is about your volunteering experience. You are like a part of a lot of initiatives and you do a lot. And a part of like, you know, those are really, very good initiatives. So would you like to share any experience which can give limelight to the audience on importance of it? 
Um, a, a lot of my volunteering nowadays is either facilitating workshops mm-hmm. or um, like the like the I Am Remarkable that I mentioned before mm-hmm. or public speaking at events. Um, that, that's the core volunteer that I do. Most of my volunteer public speaking is done through the universities that I work with. Mm-hmm. Um, usually the, the, events, the events are to inspire current or prospective students. Um, mm-hmm. And my favorite type of talk to give is on women in STEM. So empowering women and pushing for more gender equality in tech. Um, for obvious reasons, I'm very passionate about that one. Mm-hmm. And um, besides that, I also occasionally do mentoring of students. Mm-hmm. So most of my volunteering then is done a lot through the academic connections, just mm-hmm. trying to help students. Um, and, and I encourage others as well to try to get involved in these types of extracurricular activities. It's very important for your own pre- professional development. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks good that you're doing these types of extracurricular activities. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it gives you a chance to network as well. I meet a lot of people doing things like this. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, definitely I would encourage actually to look, uh, look those initiatives also because we have a lot of audience which are students who are pursuing their uh, career or in the academics like master's or the PhD or the uh, graduate programs. So definitely I would encourage you to check that out. Moving towards our question is not a moreover a question that the way you are speaking shows you are, you are a leader and you are leading your area of interest, which is data analytics. What is your leadership style and any specific leader that you always follow or admire and why? I think for, for the leadership style, I think that depends a lot on what setting I'm in. Um, in, the, in the classroom and in public speaking, I'm very charismatic, passionate, and I also like to get my students or the audience involved as much as possible. So in this type of setting, it's a very solo type role, mm-hmm. and my job is to lead the classroom. Um, and in a corporate setting, it's a bit different. I don't currently lead teams. I lead projects. And this, as a leader, involves a lot more collaboration and organization. Um, And personally, I'm an extremely organized and detail-oriented person, sometimes to an extreme uh, measure, but still, I think it can help a lot in this case. Um, And then you asked about which leaders I follow. Uh, there's, there's, There's one I very much look up to, Cassie Kozarkov. She's the chief decision scientist at Google. She's very, very involved in the analytics space. She has a very active blog and and videos. Um, She's a very active networker and she's a wonderful public speaker, which is one of of the big reasons I look up to her. Um, You can use her as a model to aspire to because she's she's very good at public speaking and she's also very good at um, one of the things you mentioned, which is translating technical terms Mm -hmm. to even more business audiences, explaining very technical things in words that everyone can understand. Yeah, that's very true. Actually, I also follow her a lot. And the way she explains the machine learning with, you know, kitchen. It's great. It's great to see, actually. So uh, I can completely relate to it. And I'm trying to get her on the show as well. Hopefully, she will agree one day. So thank you so much for sharing. And uh, towards the ending of this show, actually, the last question is about any tips or advice you already gave a couple of because you are already into the mentoring and facilitating. So, um, any tips or advice to the aspiring students or professionals who are looking to start or grow in the data analytics or big data field? Yeah, one of the first tips that I always give that we haven't touched on yet mm-hmm. is that you need to be ready to constantly reinvent, your, reinvent yourself. So mm-hmm. building upon your knowledge um, and building upon your skills because the tech space and the analytics space is constantly changing. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need to get into the habit of continuous learning early on. It's not going to change. You're going to have to continue with that with those learning habits. Um, and then another another tip mm-hmm. is to not disregard the importance of networking. So LinkedIn, of course, is a great platform for networking and for building a name for yourself. So don't um, don't lose that opportunity. Take advantage of LinkedIn, as well as Actively participate in local events. Get to know your local community within your field. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's a great way to just to know other people and know what other people are working on. And you never know who you're going to come across or what opportunities you might find. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then the last thing I would say, um, another, another tip that I always give is that we talk a lot about the hard skills within the data analytics space. Mm-hmm. So whether it's programming or statistics, but I think that soft skills are just as important. And you can open a lot of doors 
if you work on this. So if you work on things like effectively telling stories with data, communication in general, public speaking, you need to develop these skills because in this field, there, there is a lack of people who are able to explain the results well. Um, mm -hmm. So if you can be one of them, you'll, you'll find a lot more opportunities. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It was really very nice to talk to you. And the way you were speaking, actually, I can relate to that, that you were you were coming up with like, you know, highlighted points. So I can relate to that your profession as well being consultant, as you mentioned, that you pay a lot more attention to the details. So you gave very specific advice as well to the aspiring students and the professionals. So thank you so much. And uh, audience, definitely you are going to enjoy this episode and learn a lot more as well. So do uh, watch it out whenever it gets published. Thank you so much. And as I always say, until we meet, happy leading. Let's live together. Stay safe. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.